when the Do Dover trial happened, I mean, I was a I was a Christian in science, and I, and I it was really overwhelming. Uh, it, it was a time of shadows. It was, it was a time of darkness in a lot of ways because it really didn't seem even at that time. I mean, I wondered even about leaving science because it just didn't seem like I could be a Christian in the sciences at that point. There was just so much conflict and animosity. So tell us what we're looking at right now and I'll, I'll explain it for those who are listening via, yeah, this via is from, audio. This is from Google Trends. It actually goes back to 2004, which is very convenient for us because that's right before the trial. And really, we'll see like over the last 16 years, what are the key events in, in the faith science conversation and how they've interacted with society. And there's only really two events you need to care about. But the first thing I did as I looked at intelligent design, young earth creations, and young earth creationism doesn't, doesn't actually register. So we're going to use Ken Ham as a proxy. Okay. Friend, all right. He's the, he's the president of Answers in Genesis. Um, Mike Behe, you're still smaller than intelligent design, but Ken Ham is bigger than Young Earth Christians. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, right I'm here in orange, you can't see it because compared to these guys, it's nothing. It's this cartoon that says that, you know, that God throws creationists as a curve, points to a little, a little newt and says, let there be evolution. So that's theistic evolution. Okay. And so obviously intelligent design, uh, quite a large slice of the pie in terms of uh, internet searches in 2004. Yeah, in terms of where people were thinking, right? And, but you know, I'm a scientist. I'm going to have some good controls. So let's kind of put some other stuff that's here. It's interesting. Um, here we still have uh, intelligent design, Ken Ham, and theistic evolution. Poor theistic evolution. What's going on with them? <laughs> you know, and you can put Francis Collins or Biologos or evolutionary creation. It's all the same. But then we have this guy here, Bill, Bill Nye. Nye. Mm, the science guy and, and lots the of science guy and it's funny a lot of people think he's a scientist but he's actually just an actor that plays a scientist on tv let's just keep that <laughs> well, well he's then, he's got lots of internet searches for him far more than intelligent design even and, and far then there's, more than then there's richard dawkins yeah richard dawkins right okay so, so, so richard dawkins, he's a little bit bigger than id but you know you know, he's, you know, he, he's a real scientist, you know, you could disagree with him, you know, he, he's probably more of an atheist than a scientist in terms of what he's promoting, but, you know, Bill Nye is like really the giant so, here, which so is a little bit concerning is, to me. Is this showing searches since 2004 to the present day? Is this showing, yeah, yeah the, the, the preponderance? And obviously Bill Nye puts them all in the shade. Um, <laughs> which is, uh, once again, I think it's really interesting to me and a little bit concerning that, you know, He's yeah. not actually a scientist here. Okay. <laughs> and, well, I mean, and Ham isn't a scientist either. Well, show us what and, happened around the time of the trial, because uh, you've been looking at what people were searching for. and Yeah, so we can look at it over terms. time, and I think this gets to really what's going on culturally here. And like I said, there's really two key events over the last 13 years. One is this big uh, blue blob right here, and another one is this, uh, this green-red spike. So, and, and just for the sake of those who can't see it, the, the blue spike, it represents intelligent design searches. And yeah, it's about a year that, wide. And, and we can see that there was a lot of searching for intelligent design compared to the other trends uh, around the time of the trial, funnily enough. Uh, so people were obviously interested in, in looking into that. But then and you, you know, kind of see there's like a long tail. You can see kind yeah. of blue there, right? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, then you kind of see this gigantic spike. For, for Bill Nye. I don't know what happened guy. back then, like in around 2010 <laughs> or 11, but then that's all of a sudden when everyone knew about who Bill Nye was. <laughs> he must have been on TV or something. Anyway, he 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 suddenly starts <laughs> popping up a great deal. And then, and of then course, two, 2014 yes, is the yeah. Ken Ham Bill Nye debate. Uh huh. And that's where you see a big spike for uh, for Bill Nye and a smaller spike, which is still pretty big. I mean, it, it turns out the Ken Ham spike is bigger than the Dover trial spike. Indeed, yeah. For when they had their debate. Um, and it's a very short lived one because uh, Ken Ham falls into obscurity after that. But then, you know, Bill Nye is doing pretty well. So, yeah. you know, he, he's kind of towering over everyone. I, I want whoever Bill Nye's PR person is because he's obviously <laughs> doing, he's doing well. So anyway, this is interesting. It shows us that obviously there was, a, there was a great deal of interest in intelligent design in 2005 when the trial was taking place. Uh, also, obviously, a certain amount of interest in creationism and Ken Ham answers in Genesis and so on, especially around this debate he had with, with Bill Nye. Um, but what's your overall picture then? From What's your takeaway from this, Joshua? Well, what I think is important here is that the reason why Dover is really important is that's really when intelligence design had really the public spotlight. And that's really shaped in a lot of ways how a lot of people are going to respond to, to ID, whether it's fair or not. That's just 
that's just a reality. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was in, I was actually in graduate school at that time, you know, ID was a really niche idea that most people hadn't even heard of in science before that point. Uh, and when the Do Dover trial happened, I mean, I was a, I was a Christian in science and I, and I it was really overwhelming. Uh, it, it was a time of shadows. It was, it was a time of darkness in a lot of ways because it really didn't seem even at that time. I mean, I wondered even about leaving science because it just didn't seem like I could be a Christian in the sciences at that point. There was just so much conflict and animosity there. Um, and it really, it was a really challenging time. And, uh, you know, most scientists uh, ended up rejecting uh, uh, intelligent design at that point. Now, it's interesting to hear Mike talk about it. We've already talked about this um, just a couple weeks ago. I'm going to try and summarize the best I can the places where I think we agree about what happened. I think we agree that, um, that most biologists reject intelligent design. I think we also agree that for, for intelligent design to really uh, move past the Dover trial, um, it really has to convince more biologists that, that, that there's some legitimacy there. And that also that, you know, until it's really done that, it wouldn't really make sense to require teaching 